Hey everyone, welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. Tonight we're playing Fearsome Wilderness. This is an upcoming, or it might be uh, already an existing uh, RPG from uh, Geek Geektopia Games, which uh, is on Kickstarter, uh, or will be on Kickstarter here shortly. Uh, so uh, feel free to uh, check it out. Uh, the link is going to be in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, you can learn more and they've got uh, a link to the quick start, to their website, everything that uh, you might want to be interested in. Uh, tonight we're going to be playing Fearsome Wilderness. We've got the game's uh, designer, Matt Cross, on to uh, run through one, through a one shot and, and kind of show us off the game. Uh, this is Again, this is a year zero engine, so it's a D6 dice pool system. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of explain it a little bit as we go as well. So feel free to uh, stick around. We're going to be playing Fearsome Wilderness from Geektopia Games. Welcome back, everyone. Tonight we're playing Fearsome Wilderness. But before we begin, I just ask you a couple things. If you enjoy these sessions or you're, if you're excited about Fearsome Wilderness, please hit that like button down below. Um, that helps the, the YouTube analytics and all that, and it helps us gain, it helps us uh, content get a little more, get some exposure, and because we're really excited about this game for, for Matt and the, the team at Geektopia Games. We hope it's a big success for them. Uh, we're really excited to play it tonight. Uh, also, if you are uh, joining us and you're in the chat, let us know what, uh, what folklore creature you're most interested in, and, and uh, I'd be curious. I've always been like a Sasquatch Bigfoot uh, kind of guy. I always thought that was kind of neat. And, you know, you never know. There's sightings of them all over the place. And it's kind of odd that we haven't seen one actually physically yet. So let me know what you think. Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, before we get too far in, let's uh, bring on the rest of the crew uh, that's going to be joining us tonight. We've got Matt. We've got Josh. We have Ben. And we have Austin. Guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight, giving your time. Really super excited for this game. Matt, thank you again for, for coming on and, and running it for us. Of course, of course. I'm very excited to uh, have some fun messing around in the woods today with, with you gentlemen. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, at this point, my intro is over. I'm just going to throw it over to you. So, Got it. It's, it's yours. <laughs> um, so, yeah, excited to dive right in. And uh, and just uh, play a play a session, you know, kind of a one shot session of Fearsome Wilderness with everyone. Hopefully, kind of show off some different aspects of the game. This game can easily be played as just like a one shot, like we're gonna do tonight. But there's a whole campaign, and uh, it uses the Year Zero engine. So we'll be rolling some dice pools. Everyone's probably got three different colors of D6 dice uh, at the ready, and. Uh, it's also October, and we're launching our Kickstarter on October 20th, and that's kind of right in that Halloween season, so um, this game has lots of horror elements, and we're going to try and keep it a little bit spooky for everybody. So, um, Just just don't make it too scary for Josh. He's very sensitive. He gets, <laughs> he gets scared very easily. Well, I, I, uh, I will do my best to, to freak you out then. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and we've got we've we've made some characters, so I mean maybe I'll just set the stage a little bit, Doug. Um, sure. So in Fearsome Wilderness, uh, this is a game that I've created that is based off of a board game that we made, and me and my writing partner Ian Baskey uh, of Geektopia Games uh, spent a bunch of time putting the story together, but then utilizing some of the monsters from the board game, which are called Fearsome Critters, and they are actual real. Um, you know, mythological creatures from North American folklore. So uh, some public domain monsters that are a little bit absurd, but very dangerous that I hope we'll encounter. So um, this has a very horror, but it's also a very survival themed game, a wilderness survival theme. So um, basically what has happened is you are, the playable characters here are prisoners. Um, they're convicted criminals. They're convicts that have um, been serving out their prison sentence. They actually uh, had a, you know, this is a sci-fi setting. So they were given some, given an opportunity to uh, spend some of their prison sentence in hi extended hibernation. 
uh, hoping that as time goes on, prison system would get a little bit better. They wouldn't be overcrowded. That was the promise is that technology progresses and makes things better. But that actually, in reality, did not happen for these characters. And they have been woken up uh, on a new prison spaceship that's taking them to a different planet where they're hoping to, to build a new prison colony. And in the prologue, which we're going to skip past so we can just dive right into some wilderness action. Uh, but in the prologue, what has happened to you, um, characters, is that the spaceship taking you there has crashed. It, it does not make it to its final, its uh, intended destination. It was en route and some, by mysterious circumstances and a lot of hectic, uh, crazy crash sequence that happens, uh, you have, the, the spaceship has exploded over a, a planet. Cargo that was on the spaceship, either luggage type items, personal items, or, you know, building supplies, things like that for this new prison colony have been strewn across the wilderness. Uh, and, and everyone here survived. A lot of people didn't survive that crash, but the group here survived. Some other, um, some other prisoners have survived too. So you have a little group of people that have been in the wilderness for about, I'd say, a week and a half. Um, so, you know, the first night that you crashed in the wilderness, it was very much, where are we? Are we going to get rescued? Um, hoping, hoping for something like that. But enough time has gone on now where you have begun to, rather than just sleeping kind of in the crash wreckage, you have started to make, you know, little shanty, little um, shelters, and food is top of mind because there is not any of it, and you are in the wilderness, and we'll probably need some food and probably need to protect yourselves. So that is kind of where we're starting off, um, and I think it might be good to introduce you know, these these poor souls that have crashed and become shipwrecked and cut off from from society on the in the fearsome wilderness. So we've got uh, everyone's made characters. You know, like I said, these are prisoners. You, you, you're, this is early enough in the game that you're probably all wearing your prison jumpsuits at, at this point. Um, well, they're and... so comfy. So <laughs> yes. And we've got, I guess let's start off with, we've got uh, Henry Madigan, who uh, we know a little bit about, but uh, I don't know. Josh, do you want to tell us a little bit about, about Henry? Sure. I am Henry Madigan, and I may have been convicted of, uh, of uh, some illegal uh, drugs, but I swear to you, I am innocent. But I serve my sentence. And now I want off this damn planet. Well, very good. That might come in handy having someone who knows a little bit about medicine, right? And then we also have uh, uh, Rust Hagam, who is the archetype, the folklorist. So uh, I'm I'm Rust, and I've been well <laughs> studying. Uh, cryptids and 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 weird things that go bump in the night all my life, and I, I overreached a little bit and staged a, staged a sighting that uh, went horribly wrong and caused the, the 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 injury of some some innocent people, and uh, uh, unfortunately that's what landed me behind bars. But I was only doing it to educate people about these wonderful things that that do exist. I believe they do. They, they must, otherwise my life might be a lie. It's fine. Rust, thank you for the intro. And um, John, John Ballows is the, is the woodcutter archetype. Um, John, you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, who your character is today? Yeah, I'm John Ballows. Uh, just your... Average everyday woodworker, uh, forestman, um, serving time in this prison sentence. Uh, you know, it's nothing I haven't been through before. I'll I'm sure I'll get through this too. Uh, I'm in prison because a guy I was work with, uh, he fell onto a he fell onto one of the milling saws. I'm not really sure what happened. I think the court has an idea, but well, that's for them to decide. Yeah, accidents happen, right? All the uh, time. 
and, and John and and the the group, you know, this group together knows each other pretty well. You've been in the wilderness for like a week, right? And and everyone remembers John from the prison transport. You know, picture like a big prison bus, but it you know in spaceship form. Everyone's kind of shackled to to seats or benches, but there was one guy in a big cage that they deemed dangerous enough that they needed to keep separate and keep in a cage. And you guys all, you know, after landing here, either light, you either were ner nervous about John or you at least knew who he was because he was in that cage. And then Frank, uh, Frank Mettings, tell me a little bit about what player uh, or what character you'll be playing. Um, I'm, I'm Frank Mettings. Uh, I'm the goon archetype. Uh, I'm kind of gruff, stout, uh, very haggard. And uh, basically, I'm here. I was in prison because I stole some food. And usually, I, I, I follow all the rules and everything. But, you know, people just get the wrong idea because I'm so big and, and you know, beefy-like. Um, and uh, people think that, like, oh, I'm out... All I'm, all I'm for is just, you know, roughing people up and stuff. But, you know, I do follow the rules. But you know what? Whatever can go wrong usually does go wrong with me. And that's what happened. I was just trying to get some food for my family. I bet broke the rules just that once to steal. And I ended up here of all places. God damn it. Like, why does it always <laughs> have to be the worst scenario every single time something has to go wrong with, for me? I, this now I'm crash landed here, and I got to deal with all these. Guys. Oh my god, I can't believe it's just it just never ends in this place. And it doesn't end. It has you hoped the the first couple of days it would end, right? Like you know, you go through that kind of realization that maybe no one's coming um, to rescue. But you know, all of you have kind of shared these stories that you just shared with us on on the the video today of. You know, that's kind of what prisoners do when they're meeting each other. Like, what are you in for, right? So, um, been hanging out here for a little while. Um, it is, we're going to start the day off here in a second. Let's see here. I might show you the crash, like the little ma the map of uh, kind of where we are here. Sure. Uh, that's one thing that's really great about this game. It's, it's got this really great hex crawl aspect to it which uh, is also something that i love from the uh from a lot of the free league games and just text crawl rpgs in general so uh, i was really excited to see that this game also has a hex crawl aspect to it yeah and let me show you that hex crawl here too make sure i don't show you the gm one look at that all Listen. right, so I'll show you this in a second here, but let's take a look at that hex map that you were alluding to because that is what you're, that's kind of how this game works is you are in the wilderness. You have not really gone out too many places, but um, you do have this map that um, that will be important in the game, right? So you'll start out, it has the crash site there, but um, you can hex crawl. Now, I think everyone on this call is familiar with, you know, Mutant Year Zero and some of these other games, but for viewers out there that aren't, um, <clears throat> there will be, you know, special locations out there that have interesting things, but a lot of these are just randomly generated, and you're welcome to kind of explore the whole area. Now, for our one shot, we probably won't be exploring a lot of this uh, map. Um, what we'll probably be looking at here is, at, at to start, is this, uh, this map where I, I was showing the, the crash site. So can you guys see that now? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the spaceship is broken up into a million pieces. You know, that first night <clears throat> you were huddled up in some of the wreckage, uh, just trying to, you know, survive. A um, couple people made some spears. Does anybody have any weapons? What do you think that you would have made over the past week of being here? Um, anything that you think? You know, let's go around and say, what kind of weapon might you have to protect yourself right now? I feel like I would have like a, just like a big, like almost like a tube or a pipe or something from the sh just like as like a like a you know a, a club, yeah. yeah, something something that I can just kind of swing around and you know that that's kind of do some damage with and fight off things. Nothing nothing too advanced though, just just uh, something. 
probably probably a big like vent pipe from the from the spaceship and and just carrying that around with me. That sounds wonderful. I would go ahead and just mark that on your um, character sheet, and uh, I'll tell you the weapons table here in a second. Um, it's just a blunt instrument will be, you know, a plus one to your bonus. So you can roll a gear. Uh, when when Doug makes a, a check with that, he'd roll an additional gear dice. Um, and it's just one damage, but, you know, pretty good to have something rather than nothing. Henry, wh what do you got with you? I, I would have fashioned, uh, taken like bits of metal and fashioned some really crude uh, surgical equipment. Like a just scalpel. like basic, you know, scalpels, maybe like a, a really rough bone saw. I love it. Like okay, that. cool. Yeah, go ahead and add it and just, you know, like a one damage is probably good for that. Um, uh, Rust. I'm just going down how I see the names. I would uh, probably have uh, gone out just to the outside of the crash site and actually gotten myself uh, a good sturdy... Uh, length of wood and made myself uh, probably a nice short spear uh, maybe using a little bit of uh, twisted metal from the the wreckage as the as the spear tip but give myself a little bit of reach just in case because I don't really want anything out there getting too close if, if, if I can help it yeah that, that's awesome that will give you a little reach and it would just be a plus one bonus but two damage on, on that that bad boy um, and uh Rounding off, John. Um, I think that's the last one. What what uh, what might you want to use as a weapon, or maybe you don't well, have one? I'm a I'm a woodcutter by trade. I'm skilled with uh, carpentry, so I would imagine I would probably take a pretty stout piece of branch um, and fashioned a simple axe uh, using that and wreckage from the craft. Probably the axe had lashed to this to the hilt with uh wire or cable or something like that it's probably not too sharp but uh my strength alone will probably carry the blade through you know it might be kind of yeah yeah the strength for sure you know it might be kind of fun to just roll a make check and uh see if this thing turns out to be like really flawlessly made um or if it's just kind of like you tape tape some metal to a stick Okay, so I have two for make. So am I rolling? Is that right? I roll two d six, and then and then and then add your wits to it. Add your wits. Okay. And you're looking for sixes. Uh, I have one six. Great. So you so you made it, and it's looking pretty good. It's uh you you found a way to sharpen it, metal on metal. So, you know, some way to kind of sharpen on a rock, I guess. And and it's uh. Oh yeah. It's even got like a little sh shine to it when you you know the sun catches it. It's uh, you're pretty proud <laughs> of that. So, um, very good. So, I like to say I'm gonna stop sharing this now so we can just talk. Um, I like to I like to say that when we play this game, you know, you kind of separate it into you know some wilderness survival. What are we gonna go do for the day, and then some some mysteries usually happen in over the course of that um i will uh I'll, before we get into that too and then nighttime happens so before i go any further let's talk a little bit about what you should expect uh when you fall asleep uh inevitably need to go to sleep right or else you're going to be kind of sleep deprived um but you're not going to want to go to sleep because there might be nightmares that happen to you in this really strange wilderness um everyone has a nightmare level and i i was uh I'd instruct you all to just go ahead and change your nightmare level. We're, we're starting mid campaign. So just to show off the game, why don't we all put it at nightmare level three? And that means some of the things that happen in your nightmares will actually uh, bleed over into the real world. Mm. And we will also be making some additional fear checks um, in certain situations. So um, I also have you check. There's some check boxes on the character sheet. Maybe I can go ahead and show the character sheet for people at home. Um, if you don't mind, but there's some check boxes and you will check them off. I told I told everyone, go ahead and check three of them off. So you have four check total. You always start with one and that's how many dice we'll be rolling when we uh, fall asleep or become knocked unconscious. That's also a time uh, when, <laughs> when you're going to have to roll for that. So.
deal. Just kind of showing off what we got here for so people can follow along at home. You know, you're marking off your strength, agility, wits, and empathy. Everyone has stats, and then they have skills. Um, and this nightmare level will increase and uh, make it more common that you will be uh, forced to experience some nightmares during this session. So. It's morning. You, over the past, what I say, 9, 10, 11 days, you have been uh, kind of fallen into this routine where everyone stands around the fire in the morning making a little bit of, if there's some berries or something, um, and just talking about what are we going to do today and maybe talking about what their nightmares were last night, right? Um, and so kind of morning meeting, I would say. Um, there's, I'll let you guys kind of tell me what you're thinking about here, but some things that are going on is there's a, a heated discussion right now on how to how to best dig a latrine. Uh, that has become something that has been top of mind for everybody. And there's a, two differing opinions on how big the trench should be. And um, so they're, they're kind of bickering over that. And then um, just recently, one of the other prisoners, he had gone out uh, a day ago <clears throat> just exploring a little bit for everybody. His name's Gary Moon, and he's come back. And he's got some some wild tales that he's telling about things that he Ooh. saw out while he was exploring. I like tales. What have you seen? Oh, Rust, you wouldn't believe it. I was about, walked about a day. And then I, I saw it and I had to come straight back. It took me another day, but it's not that far away. We can get to it. What? There's pu there's a pumpkin patch. So many pumpkins. Ooh. Delicious pumpkins. And we have no food. And and I swear to you, I saw it with my own eyes. Did someone say pumpkins? It, it, yes, he, he did. I, I did. I saw it. It was more than I could carry. I I ventured out a couple days players that are playing this know it's a couple sectors that he's gone through he says i i imagine it's about you know 10 or 12 14 miles but it's easy i know how to get there now uh but i went up and there was this big cliff and i looked down from the cliff and there's a pumpkin patch but i didn't have a way to climb down the cliff and i had no way to carry the pumpkins back so let's go let's go get some pumpkins should we um Bring like a cart? Do we have anything we could carry these pumpkins with? I don't want to be carrying pumpkins the whole way there and all the way, I mean, all the way back. That's a Hold fantastic you. idea. We could fill two whole carts with pumpkins. There's a, so many pumpkins. A little bit of manual labor might do you good, Mettings. It's not right. I've done more more uh, physical labor than you have in these in in your lifetime. I've done more in the last two days than you have done in your lifetime. <laughs> That's the thing I like about Metting. He's always got a joke. I say we should definitely go get these pumpkins. They are very very good. They have uh, they're rich in carotene and other antioxidants. My man, that's a great idea. That's what I see. Uh, finally, someone who knows what they're talking about. Let's go. It'll take all day. We better go. Uh, let's let's gather up the cart and, and make a move then. Oh, we don't. Uh, we don't have a cart. We don't have a cart. Well, I'm sure we could. Oh, would there have been any um, like parachutes on on this transport? Probably not space, right? No, there were because um, there were uh, prison guards which are robotic, and they a lot of them got fell out of the ship just like the lost cargo. But these robots are pretty sophisticated. They had some parachutes on them, and they they parachuted down. So a lot of these guards are very dangerous and have been scattered about the wilderness. But if you look around, you think you might be able to find a parachute. Um, well. 
on what yeah. I'm thinking is that we take one of these parachutes and we put the, the pumpkins in and then we might be able to to pull them or drag. So as you're bringing up this idea and kind of talking about it, uh, another NPC comes up to talk to you. And this is someone that you all know very well because when you were on that prison transport, uh, this robotic artificial intelligence woman was <clears throat> part flight attendant, part prison guard, part assistant, you know, to get you checked in and everything. And after the crash happened, she was severed from her, the you know, the, the mainframe that was, you know, controlling her. And so she is quite uh, confused by what's happening in her own brain being disconnected and, and being a free kind of will. But she comes over because uh, she is kind of a friend of yours. She's in, in the same boat as you are, right? She's stranded here too and all alone and kind of, you know, on the same side now, which is a little bit weird. But she's super glitchy. So she comes over and she's been working on her arm for a long time because it just hasn't been working since like the crash. And she's got some weird tools popping out of her finger that she's she's doing. But she heard you over talking about that and she's like, uh, oh, that sounds really good. A parachute's great. Um, you know, let me let me know how I can help you. Uh, I, you know, if I find a parachute, I'll, I'll let you know. And, I, you know, it might be easier just to build, you know, a wagon. But. Um, if you find a pair, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. And she like kind of goes blank and, and her, her eyes go back and she's like, comes back. She's like, I'm sorry about that. I need to go and figure out what's going on with, with me right now. But, but let me know if you need some help. You know, I'm, I'm really strong too. Right. I'm a robot. Well, I say if you find uh, the, the parachute conveyance, you can absolutely help us pull it. And by help us, I mean we will make sure you plant your feet in firm ground and you can carry the, the load. She, she's, yes, if you think that's that's b -b 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 best, 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 glitch, glitch. Absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, what are you guys feeling like doing? You want to go venture? Yeah, let's uh, let's start making our way to the pumpkin patch. Cool. All right. Um, and we'll say that you found a parachute that you spent an hour, right? Let's like move Sweet. some time. Right. So it might be so you might need to walk a little fast <laughs> on your way there because you spent some time finding this parachute, but you kind of knew there was some around. And um, who's carrying the parachute? I feel okay. Just good to know who's got it. Okay. So, um, you know, as so Gary's going to go with you because he knows how to do it. Gary Moon, uh, you, you, you know him. He was convicted for uh, this kind of big, uh, long con. He's a confidence worker. So he was he, he was involved in a, a long con, which was a many parts to it. But it was in the news, in the galactic news. And you maybe had heard of it and you were like, oh, aren't you that guy? And he's like, no, but he was a he's a con man. So Gary's taking you to these pumpkins. Um, he says he knows how to get there, but you can't go the same way, right? Because that took you to the cliff. So he's like, we got to go around to get to these pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So I have a random, uh, I, we've made a website to, uh, randomly generate some of this stuff so that you don't have nice. to roll dice, but the book comes with ways to randomly generate all of the different sectors and, you know, the environment, the weather, the threats that are there, everything. Nice. So, um, but I'll do it with, with the online tool that I've, we've made. Um, but so, yeah, we're going to say, you know, instead of going do, uh, West, you, you, you kind of went, um, you're going a little around, right. And, uh, who's coming? You bring an AI with you. You invited her. Do you want her to come or do you yeah. want to her to stay back and like dig her latrines or make something for you? No, I think no. we bring her. I okay. yeah. think having having a little more muscle will be, be good. We need to bring back lots of delicious pumpkin. Cool. Okay. So she is still working on her arm, and she's still kind of like, you can tell she's got her mind on like two things. Like she's talking to you, but she's also like getting herself settled. But she's going to come along with you. 
and uh and she she thinks that's best too because she thinks that she's probably the best one to protect you 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 gentlemen um as you know you're just kind of squishy meat meat bags or whatever and she's a, a fierce robot so um we're, we're going out to the you know just venturing out it, it's woods right it's like really dense um you haven't been through this these paths so it's going to take about four hours to get maybe five six miles because you kind of have to explore a little bit right and this um this sector has uh steep hills so it's like a lot of going up to go down mm. to go up to go down and it's raining so it's already kind of dark skies but it's uh, this morning but now it's actually just raining so everyone's a little bit wet of a little course bit muddy and slippery and um going through here do you want to spend some time looking around for lost cargo or do you want to just kind of press through i actually uh henry wants to keep an eye out for plant life anything he might think uh they could take back and maybe make uh anything medicinal with them great let's see so there's foraging rules and that's what we'll do okay um that's great i feel like like Frank's just mumbling the whole time, just miserable. Like, like, yeah, of course it's raining. You know, we the second the second we head out, it just starts raining. That's just my luck. This is a, always, you know, when, whenever something can go wrong, that's the way it is. Jeez. Now Henry's wandering off somewhere. Where's the, Where's Henry going? Henry's looking. Jeez. <laughs> He's spending some time. Roll a d6, and we'll do some foraging for you. All right, rolling a d6. A one. All right. You found weeds um, and some like little greens, but that's like kind of just leafy stuff that you found. It would be, um, you know, half a ration or a quarter of a ration. Uh, and you found one little area with some weeds that, you know, a lot of weeds you don't think you could eat, but you think these you might be able to eat if you wanted to. Okay. So half a ration. Yeah, you can put it on your sheet. We'll say it's like two little patches. And so that equals up half a ration um okay. does does anyone want to look go hunting or trapping or well, you don't want to trap out here but anyone want to do anything else or just kind of look around for some lost cargo while you're in the area uh yeah i'll, I'll keep an eye out for some cargo um but i want to add that uh john outwardly seems like he doesn't even notice the rain in the mud it's just every day for him just just so stoic and mm -hmm. uh when uh, Frank is complaining about Henry walking away, he says, if he wants to go, let him go. It's one less of you I got to watch out for. Perfect. Um, you've, you've looked around for some cargo and you found a crate uh, that's very much like, oh, this is what those cargo crates look like. So you, you just take, if you want to take some time and walk over to it, I assume. You're yeah. Looking, you got very little resources. So, you get over there, and uh, it's already kind of busted open, so you don't have to break it over anything. But it's a, a, a handful, of, you know, maybe four or five mop buckets, uh, three mops, two brooms, and uh, th that's it. Some rags. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look, look. What did what'd you find there, John? Uh, oh, some mops and some rags for the wilderness. Great. Nice score there, buddy. Henry, hey, what'd, you what'd you find over there? Oh, look. You found some weeds. Great job. Weeds. Aye. Just like we have some over here. There's weeds Aye. all over this place. Nice find yes. there, big guy. But but these, well, never mind. They're just weeds. Yeah. None of your concern. AI perks up at this and is like, this, this is great. These, you know, cleanliness is godliness. And we, our, our campsite's a disaster. We should take these mops and start cleaning the, the ground. She obviously doesn't <laughs> get what's happening. Um, but she'll carry them for you if you want. Or you can leave them here or you could make them weapons. It's up to you, you guys, whatever you want to do. 
Um, I mean, we should probably keep the rags. Um, but the mops and the brooms, I'm thinking maybe we don't really have a use for. We can always pick them up on the way back, too. I don't suppose anyone else here really needs right. a little bit of a broom. All right, so you you mark like a, a la uh, somewhere to remember where you are. Like there's a rock that looks weird, and you're like, all right, I think we can get back here. And and you keep you keep pressing on. I think right Is that we want to do. Yeah, definitely. Let's okay. uh, let's cool. keep going. Pumpkin Gary please. says, "Follow me. We, we're so close. I can taste the pumpkins. We can cook them. We can eat the seeds. We can have oh pumpkin juice. We can have pumpkin." <laughs> pumpkin for breakfast. Who actually? Who actually trusts this guy? Come on, it's probably just one of his long con. That's I'm, that's what I'm gonna like lean over to to uh, Rust and be like, this is probably one of his like con jobs. He's just probably just conning us. We're probably just in for some something bad because you know that's what our luck is here. We've crashed on a uninhabited <laughs> planet. We have no food and running out of water and you're worried about a long con well i mean you're it, so full of jokes frank i love it oh my god i can't believe it here. hey i wouldn't lie to you boys come on just follow me i, I would never lie to you I, I i need food too god guy makes one mistake i'm gonna i'm gonna run my hand up the blade of the axe enough to draw blood and kind of wring some blood out of my hand and say, I sure hope you're not lying to us. Oh my gosh. Will you make like a, um, <laughs> a manipulate roll for me Ooh. just to see how he, uh, empathy. two sixes. Oh my gosh. He's so G Gary's like, uh, they're they're real. The, the, I saw the. I mean, I don't know if they're real. I just I saw them from a cliff. If, I, I mean, if we get there and there's not pumpkins, I, it's it's. I, I saw them. I, they looked orange and like, kind of different colored, pumpkin colors. You know, like orange and brown, like gourds and stuff. Right. I, let's just 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 come on. Let's go. Let's go. So. He is definitely scared of you, but he seems to be telling the truth. So this next area that you walk through, you've been in the woods. Um, and you get to it's just more wood, more woods, right? But you get to the next little area and you can hear it from a distance. It's kind of like the babbling of a, of a stream or a creek. And the, the rain has died down, but it's, got, it's still very, very windy. So it's like, um, you know, you're walking into the wind. It's, uh, it's still the ground's a little wet from when it was raining. And there's a, a stream up ahead. But I will tell you. Whoever has, whoever would like to make a scout roll, you feel like there's, you, you heard some rustling in the bushes. You feel like there might be some sort of wildlife threat that you need to be concerned about in this section of the wilderness. Uh, I, uh... A, gr a group roll like that would just be one person, and you'd probably want to pick whoever's really good at that looking around and scouting. Scout. Come on, tough guy. Come on, Frank. I mean, uh, I think I think Rust is probably the better, the best of us. Of, of I've this. got a good eye. I I I I I've known to look out for for animals and and studied. Well, in my books, I've studied these these strange type of animals. So I'm sure I'll be able to catch something right away. I have two successes. On my oh, way. fantastic! Okay, so. You uh you are like everyone is like hanging on your every word as far as like what what is it and 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 you know it's that the thing coming out of the the wavy bits look you you see, you see um you look around and you see some footprints so that's your first you know that's your first uh clue and you you know you don't have any books with you but it's all it's all up in your brain right so you're you're kind of thinking about what this could be and as you you Maybe you get it. Like, how, how are you doing this? You down on your hands and he's looking at a stick or, or like listening to the ground or what? What are you doing? Yeah, basically like down as low as I can and like looking for the thing that doesn't quite belong in the wilderness, like a a, a, a stick that's twitching a little too much or 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 a part of grass with glowing eyes coming out of it. 
Wait, and you see exactly that. Oh, it's not. It's uh. It's eyes. It's uh. It's kind of set back into some shrubbery. Um. And and at first you see the eyes, and then they disappear. And then you look down, and there's this tail, uh, that has a big, heavy, dense ball with spikes on it, and it quickly s goes into the brushes and disappears. Do I know what it is? <laughs> you think that that's a ball-tailed cat. A ball you think that that's a ball-tailed cat. cat. Yeah. It's a cat with a ball on its tail. <laughs> you saw it, right? John, wow. come on. Wow, did Back. you are, did you uh did you eat some of uh, Henry's weeds here cuz I this no, 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 no. A ball-tailed cat. Yes, you saw. It, you saw. It, you like saw a bald, it. like a bald tail oh. cat. Like no, is it, it like a tail without without any hair on it? it it's a ball. It's a dense ball. Like, okay, like and it is bald it's, also. It's got a weapon. It's it's natural defenses. Is a big ball. Go look. Take a look yourself if you don't believe me. Uh, I'm I'm good with not looking at any cat ball. The bushes are right in front of you, Frank. You can just go right up and look in there at the cat ball. I'm, I'm good. I'll let I'll let Russ look at all the cat balls that he wants. Russ, do you do you, I think what happens here is you start telling them all about what you think this thing looks like, yeah. and it's and it's kind of like this picture right here. That's that's what you're describing to to everybody. You're like it's got claws and it's got a tail. And it's got... Bike and ugh. yeah, that's I, a lot I, worse than I was picturing. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to go take a look at that. I would probably like... describe it slightly more adorable, just for my love of the of the subject. But yeah. It looks like this one. Of... This one's adorable, but it's like you know that they're really big, Rust. Like they're, I don't know, tiger size. It's not a pet. I want to stay here with pet. the bandages uh, while you go <laughs> look at the cast balls. Uh, can we just like not go near this cat? Can we like walk around it? Yeah, we'll, we'll 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 give it some birth, and it's. What, what do you know about this type of cat, there, Rust? It, it likes uh, it likes gruff behavior, so be nice, and it will leave you alone. All right. We'll we'll just go wide. It it'll, it'll be it'll be fine. Sounds good. Let's 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 not uh, let's not pet the kitty. All right, so sneak rolls, but um, I think everyone probably needs to do their own right now because, sure. um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, two successes on my sneak. No successes. Uh, I got one success on my sneak. You might be able to use your... Well. Cool. I think you can use your stunt to give to another person in the same situation. So, are you, so do you want to help? Like, uh, someone failed, but someone got two successes. How do you help each other? Basically, I'll be like, follow me, and step where I step, and we can probably move around and not draw the attention of this thing. All right. So you're going real slow, and you're like you feel like every little stick and leaf that you step on is like so loud and uh you're <laughs> and you're uh you, you you do it though you get all the way around and what what happens is you kind of get around the other side and and uh and there's no action there's no the the beast does not come out or show itself but you hear a scream from it like if a cat was screaming <laughs> like you step, like it got stepped on or something like it's hurt or it's mad a mad hurt cat is screaming right now that does not sound good 
maybe this is like the the how you say the um mouse and the the lion you remove the thorn from the lion's paw and you be friends yes no i didn't see any did you see a lion rust well he said he was very big i i would let the uh if that is the case i would let the 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 wound heal itself i think uh unless you have something in those weeds that might make it better well i don't know till we get uh till we get back and i can study the weeds it's, let's let's keep moving to the pumpkins i think i'm gonna turn to gary and say you mean to say that you went all this way to the pumpkin patch and you didn't see any of these beasts and you made it all the way to and from without any kind of trouble i i i told i told you john i told you john i went the other way that i was up on a cliff i couldn't get i couldn't get that i wouldn't lie to you john I, I would never lie to you about something so awesome as pumpkins i'll take your word for it now all right well you can keep sneaking away the the cat is screaming less it's kind of whimpering and crying and and henry's like super sad i probably but you guys want to keep going? Okay. Oh, uh, come on, guys. You don't hear it. The the creature is suffering. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll be suffering if we go over there and help it. So let's go get some yummy pumpkins. I, I don't think we can provide the amount of help it may need on the empty stomachs that we have. We can maybe help it on the way back through. I... It's, it's, it was a wonderful sight to see, but I don't think we should push our luck on it. All right, so you keep going, and you're walking along here to the, you know, through the woods. There's a creek, and you went through it. Get, you know, get some wet feet probably, and you know, the ground's all muddy. Um, feel like that bad luck is is continuing, and. In the next area, the rain picks up again, unfortunately. And of course it's, it does. And it's specifically thunderstorms. Of course. <sighs> um, this is an open field, though. Um, and like I said, these are, you know, five, six mile, 10 kilometer uh, areas. So um, you think you're getting Gary's like, we're so close. This is it's got to be it. I can kind of see the cliff over there. We got to be getting close. But. Um, as you're you're going through here, there is a, a, an opportunity to maybe look for some lost cargo, or to maybe scout and make sure there's no uh, threats that would uh, would hurt you, like animals, basically. I'll, I'll definitely take another little scout around and see if I find any animal sign. It's getting dark too. It's going to be yeah. close to dusk. Hmm. The darkness has affected me. I got nothing. Well, if you want to push your roll, you're uh, uh, welcome to. I will. And I actually have a um, a talent as the folklore that is a critter uh, lore. So I get a plus one modification on uh, rolls involving critter knowledge or identification. Uh, and it, when it relies uh, relates to a critter, I can push any skill roll twice if I need to. And not just once. So, uh, looking for some animal sign. We'll see. Uh, this time I did get a success. So Great. I will. I will keep it at that, and uh, not push further. Does anyone else want to look around and find more stuff? Yeah. Or are we good with how how much he scouted? I, th I think I kind of want to take a look and see if there's any cargo. Yeah, I'll scout. I did not get any successes. Um, do I want to push that? Uh, yeah, I'll push it. Let's let's push it just because for the sake of push it. I'm gonna push it real good. Uh, this time I did get a success. Awesome. Okay, so that's great. And someone else was gonna push it too. I forgot to tell you guys. Whenever you're pushing your roll, check a nightmare box because. Uh, oh, that's right. 
you're you're pushing you're, you're stretching yourself yep. out you're pushing yourself to the max here um mark those boxes i also got a success on my search john great scout. okay so we're getting like a couple scouts here and then rust got his when he was looking around for some animal threats and uh would you just roll a random d6 for me, uh, Rust, please? Just to help me find a random animal here that you discovered. Sure. Uh, I rolled a three. A three. There is a owl. A uh, who? An owl, like a who? bird. Like an, yes, who? a hoo hoo. <laughs> And it's in a tree. It's like up above. So I don't know. You can eat owls, maybe. I don't know if you can eat owls. I might have to. Does it have a ball? No. Why? Why are you obsessed with the ball? Just saying. The last the cat had a ball. I didn't know if maybe this owl had a ball. It's got a beak. Ah. Spider. Bites. Yeah. Claws. No balls. I think they're called talons, aren't they? Talons, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, you just and you hear it. It's like the mat. It's kind of it, it makes it. You know what? That's really creepy that you're out here and you thought there's a thing and there's a weird owl that just looks kind of creepy. Everyone roll uh, a d6. Oh, a six. Just endure this. Just endure okay. how. Just endure how creepy this is. is. Yeah. Endure. Could be a couple other different things we could roll, but we'll just do that. I did not succeed. I got two successes on that. I'm a little off put by right. two. Two. If if you end up with no successes, take a condition to your empathy and tell Ooh. us what you what you what you're feeling. I am feeling a bit distraught that we left the ball cat uh, uh, back there. So I'm feeling sad, and the, the sight of this owl makes me think of being alone out here in the wilderness and, and you know, injured. I can only imagine what if it was one of us and, and people just walk by and, and leave you lying there dead. Yeah. I just, or dying, you know, it's, it's got to be the worst way to go. So I, I am, I am feeling emotional. I, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm upset that I've spent all of this time studying the, the, the weirdest of the, of, of, of the wildlife that could exist out in the universe. And, and this small bird is unsettling me so so I'm I'm a little bitter that I haven't at myself that I haven't been able to steal myself a little bit better for a, a small flying nuisance. As as you're saying that and as you're dealing with that The owl is like disturbed by you. It's been watching you and it, it, it bumps into its nest and its nest kind of falls apart and like falls down to the ground. A couple eggs fall down. And they don't, they're not broken though. They're like the nest like dropped the fall. They weren't too high up. It's two owl eggs in front of you and an owl up in the tree. I will run over and, and collect the nest and make sure the eggs are okay. Oh, okay, idea, Henry. Okay. Breakfast. I... Oh You're... no no no. No, not breakfast. No, rust. Bad. These but, but... are live creatures. No, <laughs> it's it's breakfast. It, it's not breakfast. The the mother is up there. You wow. you must you must have some sort of moral compass. Do you not? I mean, I I would never 
never kill a baby, but those are eggs. Like, well, see, see the baby's inside. Uh, you no, don't know yet. what an not, egg is. Not, not shall we, yet, shall we no. go through what an egg is? It's delicious. I know what an egg is. Some bacon? Do, do, do you not study the animals uh, around the world? What if these owls are special? It's it's obviously discarded. It, it's, well, it's, I'm, I'm I, hungry, Henry. Please, can I? Come? I will go. I will climb the tree and put his, the nest back. This yeah, owl is I'm... watching you, Henry. It's looking straight at you. You're gonna you're gonna Fine. do that? Yes, Fine. yes. Nobody, Miss Mrs. Owl. I I will come and bring you your children. And I will, like, carefully try to shimmy up the tree, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not that, like I said, it's not that tall. It's, it should be a piece of cake for you, Henry. But but please roll a move roll. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. And you know it's nighttime if this owl's awake because it's nocturnal, so it's getting darker <laughs> yeah. as you're messing around with this tree. It's getting darker. Yeah. I, I do. I did get one success out of that. Awesome. All right. Well done. You, the owl is very. If it was a person, it would thank you, um, but it doesn't. It kind of says "hoo hoo," and uh, <laughs> you climb a back down. A fruity hoo to you. And. Uh, and then there was some, some people were looking around for some lost cargo, right? So who, yeah. who was the first one that found some lost cargo? I did. Okay. You found um, a, a bunch of paint buckets with paint in them. Paint buckets. All right. Yeah. And um, along with it were was, well, I guess that's all that is. Who, who was the other person that found some stuff? That'd be me. Okay. Um, you found zip ties and along oh, yeah. with the zip tie, yeah, along with the zip ties were um other like miscellaneous things that are junk. I don't know how else to put it. Like um these were like thrown away. It was kinda like a garbage bin that like got thrown about. But one of the things that was the ones that's actually good there is the zip ties. You think that might be kinda cool to have, so absolutely. Did anyone else find any lost cargo? Okay. I don't think so. I so, lost uh, my breakfast. <laughs> yes. That's... All right. So um, you're walking along and you're sticking to the plan, right? And wouldn't you know it, Gary's eyes light up. Gary Moon. And says, I told you. I told you there was pumpkins. And you guys look out and... You know, out in the distance, uh, there's a huge pumpkin patch, uh, and and you're excited for it. Uh, it's it's like dark as night right now. So dark, it's like really hard to see. You probably want to light a torch or something. Should we set up a, a, a makeshift camp for the evening and then collect the pumpkins and and head back tomorrow? I mean. Have some roast pumpkin for dinner. Well, yes, of course we can. We can eat. I'm not saying we shouldn't eat, because uh, I will want something in the morning too. I didn't get my my eggs. If we're gonna set up a camp, I'll start. Uh, I'll have chop down a couple trees and make a a real primitive lean to, and use our parachute maybe as a a covering. Perfect. That's perfect. All right, so who's going over to kind of check out these pumpkins and maybe grab one to eat, or you know, just take a look at these? I'll uh, I'll I'll head on over and look at some pumpkins. Uh, I'll go over half expecting them to be rotten or something, just because that would be our luck. Because that's whatever. Nothing good can ever happen to me. <laughs> so you go over there, and you're right. See. Told you. You know, you guys know like what a gross pumpkin looks like. It's kind of mushy. And uh, 
and this is Frank over there, right? So it's really dark, Frank, and you're trying to like kind of look closely, like to see if you can actually eat these or not. And and you put your finger through one of them, and all these bugs start just pouring out of it and like yeah. going all around your feet and like up your legs and just yeah. yeah, get them off me. Problem? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like gonna swat them down and try to like shake them off and i've got uh ah i think you're trying to force them off or you're trying to like kind of be agile and like get away from them with a move or are you trying to i think to... i'm going to try to like uh, i'm i'm going to guess i'm going to try to force them off yeah um how big are they are they they're they're um they're beetle sized like yeah, like what you just held up, like a quarter or something. Like like, like a nickel. Yeah. Yeah. And they, do they bite or anything? Yeah, they're biting you real bad. Ah oh, no! Don't bite my ah. Yeah, I'm gonna try to force them off my legs and kind of swipe at them, and yeah. All so right. that is going to be. Yeah, try a force. Uh, that one is one success. All right, you got them off of you. you it took a like couple minutes. It felt like a ten minutes, but you like scratch them off and pulling them off and like stepping on them and trying to get away and and uh, you do get away. So your roll means you get them off you. But during all this, please take a condition to your strength. Okay, um, just because like that's pretty nasty. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say whether I'm aching. They they made my made my legs kind of ache and, and not very good. But my question for you is, do these bugs look like they could be roasted and made as a snack? Yeah. Um, does anyone have, like, uh, Russ, do you know about these bugs with your folklore knowledge? I, or I don't know. Do I? Let me... Maybe roll a, a lore or whatever. Sure. Uh, they'd be like a uh, comprehend, or yes, 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 that's what I meant. Yeah. Sorry, cool. Uh, two successes on my oh, on my room. Nice, you're like, yeah, you can eat them, they taste really bad, but they're really good Let's for you. Let's get some um, bubs, bitter. but he says, but they're like, um shells are really really hard these must be like kind of alien planet versions of this bug and so you're going to either need to squish them all and like eat them like a paste or like bite them with the side of your teeth really hard and like it's going to kind of really hard to get through that external exoskeleton uh, but you can eat them and, and that would give you i mean if you want to go and get a bunch of bugs you can get as many rations as you want <laughs> well, I, what, Russ, I'm, I, I know that like you, you know all about these. I'm thinking, like let's let's scoop them all up and, mm -hmm. and put them over the fire, and like see if we can bake them a lot, like boil them alive, and then that way maybe the shells will soften and then it'll like boil their insides, and we can eat them. And we can just like crack them open like like peanuts, and, and you, just you brought the cooking pot, correct? No, I thought you did. I no, I I didn't. No, you. That, I specifically you, told you to bring the the cooking pocket. This, this I don't. Time. I don't think you did. I think you. No, I'm pretty you, sure you, you, because you said everything goes wrong, so I can't do anything correctly. Right. I said, why don't you help out? And you said, I can't help out. Everything will go wrong. Yeah, yeah. And now look at it. Everything did go wrong, because. We don't have the cooking pot now. Great. And AI says, "You're you're right, Rust. He did say that. I I remember. 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 Remember." Th thanks, AI. No problem, Frank. How come? The, how come it's the robot I get along with just just fine, but the rest of you guys it just doesn't it just doesn't seem to to click with any of you. You know. Just bring some back to the fire. We'll figure something out. We'll put a stone, and and something with it we'll we'll make it work frank just come along all right let's let's do it let's do it let's roll and make roll and see how well you're like 
stone on top of a fire with some wood next to it and see how this if it if it works or not. Oh that's for me that's not going to be very good. <laughs> Could have brought a bucket. You guys had buckets. I got a paint can. I got a paint bucket. Oh dump some paint out? I could out. I could dump some paint out. Mm. But but not all. Give yourself a bonus <laughs> dice for that roll. If there we go. Your, your item, your paint bucket. It doesn't help me at all. <laughs> well, I, I did get I did get one success. <laughs> the paint bucket has all these holes. Like somehow you draw. Like when you were getting the paint out, you punctured the bottom or something, and so it, you start using it, and it's just water's cut. Or you know, so you, you start over, and rust comes over and says, "Let move away," and you know, patches it up or whatever, and. And you do. You, he Russ said he got a success. So yeah, you, you got this, and and everyone is welcome to eat uh, some like kind of like blackish, brownish, reddish bug-looking things. Um, and like, if you want to eat some, I'll let you all clear a condition mm. to strength, mm, but, but yeah. you don't have strength. So that would just be probably for strength. But if you have a strength condition, you could. Eat that up and feel better, I think. Nice. I'm going to get rid of my aching uh, uh, condition. I'm still bitter. But, uh, mm, I'm just going to crack them open. I'm a in the belly. So. I'm going to put my hand on Gary's uh, shoulder and say, so where are the pumpkins? I told you it was a long con. How, how, was, I, how was I supposed to know? I, I, how was I supposed to know? I, I got your bugs, didn't I? I knew there. I knew there'd be something to eat here. Um, so, as this happens, you hear a screeching sound, and overhead, a humongous winged beast with a huge tail and tentacles soars, uh, soars right over your head, and like gust of wind, like brushes you. And you all look up, and all you can kind of see is the underside of this <gasps> enormous beast. Majestic. That then, like, kind of swoops back up higher into the sky. Russ, do you know what that was? And did it have... You it's know. reason to sleep next to a fire tonight. Ah. Roll comprehend and see if you know. I think I'll let you know if you can get a all success right. on that. Because, you, you know, you've studied all these creatures for so many years. So many years. One success. You you just, you don't know like I mean you don't know much about the Snallygaster, but um, you think that that thing is a Snallygaster because it has feathers and tentacles. That is the sign of a Snallygaster. Indubitably, a Snallygaster. A, a what? A Snallygaster? It's got wings and tentacles. It flies. Sleep next to the fire, and you will be safe. Uh, all right. Yeah, I. So it doesn't like fire. You see the direct that? No, you saw that. It looked like it was uh, hostile towards you, but you see the direction it went off in. Um, and you know, John's like working on his parachute, like little shelter for you and stuff. So. John, how you coming on that uh, on that shelter over there? Um, should I make a do a make roll to see the quality of the shelter? Just if you if you're trying to make it real fancy, if you're just trying to put a parachute up, it's fine. But if you had some other ideas, we might want to roll. Yeah, no, I'm looking for something pretty simple and effective. So, uh, I'm gonna say someone wants to gather some firewood. We can. Get that going next. Yes. Yes, fire. Um, and you hear the screaming again of the Snallygaster in the air. And it's windy, so your your uh, parachute is like real whapping in the, you know, what am I trying to say? It's like flapping in the wind. Yeah. Uh, I I am uh, going to make sure I've got my spear 
handy and just kind of try to stay as close to the fire as possible while uh, while the rest of the, the, the shelter gets set up for the evening. You hear a child's voice say, help, help, off in the distance of where the, the Snallygaster was flying towards. Gary, why don't you go help him? Maybe, maybe the kid has some pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, real funny, real funny, John. There, there were pumpkins technically. Okay, AI, what do you, what do you think? Well, these are pumpkins. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I hate to say it, but if if that thing does have someone else from the ship, we we sh should probably try to help. I mean, we were, willing to, we were willing to put eggs back on an owl's perch. If we don't help a person, Henry? Yes, I, I, I agree. If, if it's a, it sounds like a child to me, so I think the only right thing to do is very carefully approach this with all the caution uh, that, uh, that is uh, totally possible. Uh, so that uh, we are not uh, become, how you say, the lunch for or dinner for this creature. So it's it's the voice is very faint. It's like hard to hear through the wind, but it's definitely a human's voice. And it's kind of straight ahead. Um, but it's dark. You can't you can't see that far ahead. So you have to just walk. And and you have the ability to do a sneak or a move or whatever you want. But you probably will need to roll if, if for moving you don't need to. But if you want to sneak, please please tell me and roll that. Uh yes. As I go to sneak. As, as I am, I am a healer, not a not a fighter. So I will roll a sneak. Is anyone else going with him? You yeah. want to let him go ahead? Yeah, I'll go, go with him. Yeah, I'll go. Ooh, okay. Two successes. Okay, you can help someone then. Uh, he's going to need to help me. Oh, both of you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Frank's got a kind of a kind of an attitude, so I'll help John. <laughs> John John worked hard on that shelter, so you know. Good. All right, but but Frank, you failed yours. Is that what happened? Yeah. I, I failed too. I, I feel like I should maybe. I'll, I'll try to roll. I'll try to push it and see what happens. John, I think Henry was helping you with his extra success. All right. That, okay. That no. still failed. Well, you know, you kind of. Only goes your weakest link here in this situation, so everyone's kind of like Frank. Uh, what do you do that like just makes a huge, loud, obvious noise? <laughs> I like uh, I, I'm walking through and like maybe I trip on one of the pumpkin vines and like I just bugs going. again. Yeah. Bugs again. There's uh, bugs on you again. God damn it! Uh, what the <laughs> hell? These yeah. bugs! I tell you, yeah. can't get rid and of them. And this has alerted the beast again. Um, so the voice that's saying help, help has stopped uh, saying that. However, unfortunately, um, this large winged creature that looks like this. If I can find it. There we, go. there we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Looks like a big stork with And that's kind of you. Uh, ah. uh Frank. Uh <laughs> in a sense. Great. You know? Um it's got you with its tentacles that have come out of its beak and your arms are wrapped up and it is it decided it wants to fly up and take you up into the air with it. Uh, um, of course it does. You know, it's on its way moving up, but as it does, would you please tell me how you want to approach this with a, 
um, a force, a, a move to get out, a, a empathy, to, or you know, something to try to like. I feel like manipulate. I'm gonna try. I feel like I'm gonna take my club that I have in my hand and just start whacking the tentacles as much as I can to like maybe get him to drop me. Let's see. Uh, so, as, yeah. as Frank lift, lifts off, I'm just going to start belly laughing and saying, ah, Frank's flying. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I got quite a few oh, dice here. Frank. I got three oh. successes. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. Let's see what happens. Um, what was your weapon that you're using on this dude? I've just got a club. But you're like, you I'm know, you're like, getting I'm, a bunch of hits on this, just like wailing with it. Um, because I imagine it's maybe got you around your waist and your hands are free, and so you're just trying to to hit at the tentacles. Is that ex- what you're doing? Exactly. Yeah, I just want to get like get it so those tentacles like get off me. It is pissed off about it, and it uh, before letting go of you, it hits you with its beak, and then it drops you, and you have you did not get carried too far in the air that there's much falling damage but um please do take a uh condition for getting uh getting attacked by this a strength condition all right uh i'm going to take the winded condition from having to uh kind of beat that that, those tentacles off and then getting dropped and like getting the the wind knocked out of me but you heard it it looks hurt It, it, it you know it was like ah so um that's great, and it's back up in the air. What is everyone feeling like doing right now? I will run over and, and try to get Frank back to his feet so we can uh, maybe try to rally and, and and protect each other as a group. I, I think that I will continue to go on to the voice of the child. Very good. So but, it's... Uh, uh, allowing Frank and and Russ to to distract the the creature and possibly allowing me to slither by and uh, save the person. I love it. That's that's what happened. So so they were doing that, and you uh, you went forward and and um, kind of went a, towards the voice, and you don't hear the voice anymore, but you see. I'll show you what you see. Uh-oh. You see a, a structure um, that is kind of confusing because you haven't really seen, you've only been in the wilderness here a little while. Um, but, you know, it's weird to see this. Oh. And it's darker than in this picture. So it's like there's foliage around it. It's a real rundown barn. And um, this is just Henry that's kind of standing here seeing a really dark old barn. (laughs) Okay, so I will approach with caution. I will... uh, hopefully get to the entrance and uh i i don't want to yell i don't want it to attract any unwanted attention but i hello hello is anybody in there there's no answer it looks really dark inside and there's um there's an open door that like has no door there that you could get in, but this is kind of the back of the barn. You know, you imagine what a barn looks like on the front with, you know, doors that open and the hayloft or whatever. It's that style of barn and you're standing there and chills are kind of running down your spine because you don't have anyone with you and you're really dark. And I don't think that you have a torch or anything and you're pretty hungry. Oh. Um, I'm pretty hungry. Everyone is, I mean. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I want to just take a crouching position, maybe, you know, just on the outside of that door. And 
and listen to see if I hear that or listen for that voice again before I go all the way inside. Yeah. Um, I think what we might want to just try to see if you can, uh, no, no, it's fine. You, you're, you're sitting there listening and you know, you, a little while goes by and you don't hear anything, but you stick with it and you just like, try not to move. So you don't make any sound and it's very windy. It's hard to hear. Like you, your mind is playing tricks on you maybe, right? Like, is mm -hmm. this real? And, and then you hear something fall over in the barn, like a shovel, like a rake or a shovel clangs on the ground. And that, that's all you hear though. And it, you're, you're freaked out by it. Okay. Um, hang on. Should I stay or should I go? And I'm going in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what are, what are the other folks doing back at the campsite or at the uh, parachute sh uh, shelter shanty site? You, you're eating some bugs and uh, uh, helping out uh, Frank, I guess. Yeah. Just get, get Frank. Yeah. Are, are we clear of that creature? You haven't seen it since since it went back up hey, into the air. Where, where'd Henry? Has anybody seen Henry? Is he off doing yeah. his weeds again? I saw him go that way. He's probably looking for more weeds. Oh, we should we should probably stick together and go find him before another bird comes out of here and grabs <laughs> one of us. That's probably a good idea. All right. Very good. And so we cut the movie cuts to back to Henry um, Madigan, who is, I mean, you tell me you're taking step by step by step into this dark barn. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, and if it's, if it's super dark, you know, probably just running my hand along the walls so that I can make sure that, you know, I, I'm kind of seeing where I'm going sure so you're in there and you're just feeling and trying not to trip over shit yeah. and in the far corner there's three little lumps like a human people huddled in the corner uh with blankets and one of them is a, a kind of a little child uh, not not a child like a a younger boy um and he's crying, and, and he's probably the one that was screaming. Okay. Um, I, w I will approach them. And, um, do any of you need any help? Uh, are you okay? So the, the, the mom and a dad and a, and a son, and the, the dad hops up, and he, he grabs a pitchfork, and and points at you and says, "Get out of here! Who are you? What are you? What are you doing?" No, oh, no, I, I am doctor. I, I, me and we, we wreck on the shore, and we were looking for food, and we came across a pumpkin patch that was rotted, and we heard uh, cries, and I, I want to come and help. Uh, I I don't know. Are, are you with the are you with the church? W were you at the lonely church? The church? No, no. Like we crash. I didn't even know that there was uh, life other than these strange creatures. We haven't seen any any life other than the than, than the people at the church. Oh well, if if I can help you in any way, then maybe you can take me to this uh, church, and my friends and I would get help. He narrows his eyes and says, "You don't want to go to that church." No, oh, what what is wrong with the church? Or is it bad? To say the least. But he says, "You're a dirt. Can you can you help my boy?" I will certainly try. Uh, what is wrong with boy? 
first tell me how you got to this planet or to this wilderness? Well, we were on our ship and we were in hypersleep and something went wrong during hypersleep and uh, we woke up in wreckage and we have been surviving here for about a week. And wow. We wow. are in desperate need of food. And you're so, just a plane full of doctors? Uh, well, no. We, we have various peoples of different skills. Oh, okay. Just a bunch of really helpful, good people. Then. They're going to be so upset when they find out we're all criminals. <laughs> yes, we we have uh, we have uh, big strong men uh, that do the wood chopping and make shelters, and we have others who are uh, they do the uh, uh, research, and then we have me who is uh, the only medic. Um, that was on this flight. He seems to be warming up to this. He's he's believing you. Um, he he does before he he before he will let you kind of have the boy come up. And it's so dark in here. Like maybe the mom is trying to light a candle or something, right? And but he says, uh, "Do you do you believe in the one true raccoon god?" The one true raccoon. I never heard that the one true raccoon god uh can you tell me about this he's, god? he's mad he does not like that you don't know that you don't believe in the the raccoon god but he, he says he tells you a little bit and um i think everyone else is probably a pro getting to the bar now right coming to the door but he's finishing up telling henry madigan about how they're missionaries mm -hmm. and they came to this um planet because they heard that this was a a sacred place for you know the the raccoon god that they worship there was a raccoon man and they find raccoons holy and uh and he's kind of weird but that's what they like so and they're looking for the 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 raccoon like uh gods there's like a some sort of uh religious um monument they don't know the details but some mm -hmm. sort of religious significance to this planet and they've been looking for the shrine of the raccoon god it's a, it's legend to be deep in a cave somewhere. okay uh but yeah so... you can treat the boy you can treat the boy now and just like help them he's got some scratches from the snally gaster and stuff okay yeah so these are very minor oh. i will i will treat them and I'll take care of them. The rags. We found rags today, right? Yeah. Bandage them up. Yep. Use, use the rags and clean it up. Wrap it. Uh, maybe maybe tie one around whatever if there's a big gash or not. So everyone else is here now. What do you guys... Frank, John, Rust. Uh, you would, you walk uh... into a barn with some candles lit and a family that you've never seen. I would like to ask if, if they know what happened to the pumpkins that are out there. Like, is, is this rot widespread? Is there any crop that's, you know, we're, we're running out of food. And, and if, if they have anything that could help us, uh, that would that'd be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. The, those pumpkins, we thought we thought the same thing. It's the, the mom is saying, uh, you know, her name's uh, Kathleen. And and Tom are the mom and dad, and and Kathleen says, you know, I wanted to, I had big plans for those pumpkins. Um, we 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 left the church after things kind of got bad. I want to talk about it too much, but we left the church, and we just were we were running. We took whatever we could put in our backpacks, and we didn't really get to take much food with us. And so we were we were just trying to get as far away as we could, and we actually started getting attacked by a, this big flying creature with with tentacles and mm -hmm. luckily we found this barn and in the daytime you can see that this barn has 
crazy ritualistic symbols painted all over the outside of of the front of it, which you haven't really seen. She thinks that th that's why this place is safe. But she says, the pumpkins are no good. Some stuff is good, though. We found some berries over there, and we ate. Um, we unfortunately had to eat some some rabbits and some squirrels. And, and just every day, every time we leave the barn, the Snallygaster attacks us. So we're kind of stuck here unless we can figure out how to get that thing to stop attacking us. Because we don't have much mm. time to go out and get food. We have to kind of run back. How hard did you hit that thing, Frank? uh pretty pretty hard i mean i whacked it you know and it's like tentacle tongue thing quite a few times and it finally let me go we, we well if you could direct us to maybe some food around here we might be able to get you out of here tomorrow and uh and and at least help you out a little bit. You, you like we can come with you, and we can we can get out of here and go go find somewhere else to to stay. I mean, we're foraging for food ourselves, so any help you could provide in that would definitely go a long way to making us able to to bring you back into our community. So AI comes up to Rust and says, like. I don't think you should invite strangers back to our camp. I uh, just you know. want to eat food. I'm hungry. She says that she's been trained on analyzing prisoners. She says it a little bit too loud. I've been trained of analyzing prisoners and, and convicts and criminals. Um, and she yeah. says, like, I can kind of tell that 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 boy over there, I, he's, he's having emotional spikes. And, and the, he's he, something's going on with that boy. Um, I don't think that we should, I think we should not invite anyone to our camp until we figure out what these people are doing is that's what AI says. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Caution is good. I agree. We still need to feed ourselves. So, well, if we, if we kill the Snellygaster, we can eat the Snellygaster. Like and you hear it as you say that you hear it like and like screeches and like it's out there. I have an idea for a trap if someone's willing to be bait. <laughs> the the boy like runs into the corner and starts like kind of mm -hmm. getting into her stuff and the mom and dad look away and, and AI looks away too. <laughs> I I think uh the Frank uh, since it's already gotten a taste for him, you you send Frank as the bait and uh, just make sure your club is ready. Oh, I'll make sure it's ready, you know. Kind of, it's like whack my hand with it a couple times. The family's like, if you can kill that Snallygaster, that's we can eat and then we can leave and we don't have to worry about anything anymore like that's great please please go do that all right john what's the plan so i'm going to detail how we're going to build a square frame with and lash a bunch of sharpened branches and uh wood um as, as like spears pointing into the middle but angling down uh, Frank can lay in the middle and call to the Snellygaster. When the Snellygaster tries to get at Frank, it pushes its way into the spikes mm. and can't get back out. And once it's incapacitated, we can just clobber it. Yeah. yeah. It's a good plan. All right, but so this is on the like... ground? Like you're doing like, gra like this is on the ground and it's going to come downward? Into yes. It? You, you can you don't have to roll anything just spend like a little bit of time right so now it's getting later and later it's like it's like midnight or whatever right it's after that and but but you've gathered the resources um because the barn has a bunch of maybe it's not all i mean you can tell me but maybe it's like some branches and stuff you shard but maybe it's some tools from the barn right yep. just I, anything we can find sure um 
go ahead and I just want to see uh, you do the make roll because I think you're probably the engineer, the architect that's designed this system, and to see if it's actually thought out and like. Okay. If you did a good um, job making this thing. <laughs> so, because of my archetype talent, which is wood splitting, I get a plus one modification to rolls that involve felling trees or making th making things with wood. Making things with wood. Uh, do does, does that mean does that mean I I upgrade one of my rolls by one? Is that how that works? No, you're gonna add more uh, dice to it. Is what I. Oh, okay. Okay. What that would be so. It's uh, instead of rolling four, you roll five. Or Three successes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's uh, so this thing's great, and, and you've spent like everyone's like really impressed by like how you were talking about it. They turned around and were and they're back around. And they're like, "Whoa, that's amazing! You you have made a death trap of sorts." <laughs> um, and yeah, and some some barn pieces that are jagged are part of it. You've used tools, metal, wood. All kinds of spiky things. Um, so now I would like to put this into action, and I would like the bait to go out, and I would like everyone to kind of tell me what we're doing, and why don't we do like extended trouble or whatever, where we all just kind of explain what's happening, and then uh, let's all make a dice roll, and I'll I'll determine how how smoothly this goes. Um, but you don't have to be rolling force with a weapon. I mean, someone could be doing some other thing. Um, but I'm assuming that we're going to role play it where there's the bait, the beast comes down, ever like ready to attack. It's kind of let's mm -hmm. go around and tell me what each person is like getting ready to do uh, once you rush out there and put this plan into action. Um, I'm just going to look extra tasty, I guess. <laughs> With a weapon, though, maybe no. I mean, yeah, Just with like there? club, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna like hide it underneath so that like it, it's not like in plain sight. So I'm just gonna look like a, you know, a tasty the goon. It it brings you goon. back to the the days of of doing goon things, of uh, collecting debts, and uh, you know maybe having to get your hands a little dirty um, with a with a club like this. So um, okay, and then. Um, the, the, um, everyone else, like uh, I guess, just go and start with John. Uh, John follows. Ba um, what What are you doing here during all this? When when it went into action? So I'm going to be in some cover off to the side uh, with my axe, ready to um, basically spring on this thing and just start carving. Okay, axe at the ready. Uh, and then who else do we have here? Everyone's names popped off. So we got Henry Madigan. What's uh what are you gonna do? Um I, I think Henry's just gonna stay by by the family to help uh protect and be ready with the bandages in case Frank actually uh needs it. And Rust. I will ready my spear and, and get ready to run in after the, the beast has been caught in the trap. Is it in front of the barn where there's like the hayloft looking down and like the big barn doors open and that's where you've got oh. this or is this more over by the pumpkins? You tell me, where did you set, I guess, John, where did you set this up at? Just out back? John. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to say the beast already knows that the family's here, so I'm going to say just outside of the of the barn, um, kind of in a more open area, so there's nothing really too much to worry about getting in our way. Okay, let's do it. So Frank, uh, let's. <laughs> you're out there. You're laying. Uh, yeah, I'm everyone... gonna I'm gonna like unbutton my shirt and like try to look even more tasty than normal. You know, for an old, you know, and haggard, just... stern, you know, gruff man. I'm just gonna totally you know, get that uh, muscular chest uh, hair out and uh, yeah, lay that, lay down in that trap, I guess. Snallygaster smells you or sees you or something. Everyone's probably smelling pretty bad at being in the wilderness did, for a while. Did so Frank, it... did Frank just turn this into a thirst trap? Is that actually <laughs> yes? What Frank and the Snallygaster 
immediately makes looks at you in the eyes. Well, he's got an eye, but it uh it swoops down. So let's just have everyone make their roll if it's like a force mo- roll. We've already made the trap, so we know that that thing's probably going to work. But let's see everyone's roll. And if you fail, just tell me that you failed. What, what would my Henry? You don't be? have to, you don't Henry. You don't have to do anything. Um, why don't you do us? Uh, <laughs> you don't need to do anything. Doug. <laughs> Good. You, you got to chill, but. I got three successes again. Oh, nice. <laughs> I had to push, but I did get one success. Awesome. Okay. And Doug, roll for your club. How about that? Just because like, right, right, you're going right. to beat it once it gets oh, stuck in there. That's great. Can't wait to do that. So many dice in this roll because. And I got two successes that time. It's dead. It's so dead. You got... <laughs> it, it got stuck. It's you just clobbered it, and Frank, you can kind of slide out from underneath of it. I, I think I think that was probably a a very surreal experience for you. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, so well done. You go back in, and, and the the <laughs> mom and dad come and are hugging you, and the the kid is so happy and tears streaming down his face that they've been living in terror for you know fourteen days of the Snallygaster and they're just so they're so thankful. Yeah, let's uh let's go maybe uh, harvest some Snallygaster meat. Anybody know how to uh you know carve a Snallygaster? Well, well I, I I I was going to say is that I'm used to dissecting all kinds of creatures, so I mean, I could take a stab at it, if you will. It's just like a turkey, right? Just a chicken. Exactly. Or, <laughs> but, or like some squid, too. This, yeah. is a, this is a delicious <laughs> feast for you because it's surf and turf or whatever. And um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let us, for sake of time, kind of skip through that. But you can imagine the camaraderie, the how awesome it is to have some calories right and you got full bellies and um you can leave uh this barn and the family can leave and we can go back and there's no pumpkins but you got that big parachute and you can take some snallygaster meat back and be the heroes and um continue to explore this wilderness but um before before you you know everyone's kind of maybe getting ready to lay down after the meal and the little boy I stole these these eggs from my tree and we're on our way to the farm. After eggs, I uh, I don't know. Um, so he says. Uh, the little boy says. Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Mom, Dad. I, I stole these Snallygaster eggs off of the tree when we were when we were playing the camp. I, I I saw them in the tree and I climbed it. and I thought it would be really cool to these eggs. I didn't know if they were what kind of eggs they were, but I, I wanted to you know, two eggs. And I stole them. And I didn't know how to tell you guys that I, I stole these eggs. Uh. they're big. They look like dragon eggs or whatever, right? They're like two big eggs. Breakfast. I say we eat these ones. <laughs> the boy says, "No, I want a baby Snallygaster. <laughs> I, I'm keeping one. You can have one, and I'll keep one." You're going to sit on these for twelve hours a day to bring them to. Uh, yeah. Just to yeah. No, I wrapped them in some blankets. I don't know. Do I need to sit on them? AI says I can sit on them. <laughs> uh, it, it, I don't think a Snallygaster makes a great pet. Oh, I could ride it. I could teach it to be my guard dog. I could name it. 
<laughs> something. Uh, you you take one of these and you can eat it if you want, but I'm I'm keeping one. He says. Uh, okay, well, um, we won't always be here, but you have fun with your pet. <laughs> All right. Is it nap time or is it bedtime for everybody? Is everyone like uh, in the barn and hoping yeah. they don't have some nightmares tonight? And yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't have to use your your parachute stuff because you got a barn now. So you just nice. got you know some burlap, you know Fantastic. blankets or some hay. Blanket. Yeah, some hay. And everyone's laying down, but um, you know as you as you're exhausted and you close your eyes and fall asleep, everybody roll. Dice equal to the number of checkboxes on your nightmare track, and then uh, let me know if you fail it, or if you if you no, I'm sorry, if you get any successes, any sixes, I want to know. That's like a that means okay. you do have an idea. I got one. Okay, Frank and John have one. I got one. Okay. Uh -oh. oh no, Russ. I I have. Four, six, oh my six. god. That's oh. Ridiculous. All right, you're the lead dreamer, but everyone okay. is dreaming right now. And All I'll right. have you actually, um, like, <laughs> everyone's dreaming and having nightmares, but you're having, like, night tears. Like, mm. <laughs> like someone was awake looking at you, and you're like, ah, oh, having these horrible nightmares. Um, please roll a D66 for me. It's, it's just me unbuttoning my shirt again. <laughs> that is the nightmare. <laughs> Uh, 26 on the... 26, okay, let's throw. see. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, yeah, we'll just go with it. So, um, you know, this is probably, this is probably, like, actually appropriate because, you know, sometimes you dream about stuff that's, like, subconscious in your head or, like, stuff that you <laughs> did during the day. And so, um, you, you first are the, are the one that, um, realizes this and kind of opens your eyes and is in this dreamlike state but then everybody is and and you you've had a couple nightmares in your time here before where you're all in the same nightmare and you chalk it up to you were all sleeping in hibernation in the same pod for so long mm -hmm. that sure. your brains are kind of connected in strange ways and this wilderness is kind of strange and so you're all kind of in this dreamscape where you feel you're laying down sleeping and you wake up and you feel sticks poking in your back and like you remove your hands around there's dirty feathers all around and you look and you're all in a very large bird's nest uh, uh, mm. um, uh -oh. oh boy z now you know what it feels like to be in the nest so if you somebody going to eat us uh, that would not be good. No, that wouldn't. Uh, where's the mama? <laughs> you don't Does it resemble an anywhere. owl nest? Uh, yeah, it... <laughs> a little bit. But um, who's the who's the folklorist? Um, Rust. Um, why don't you make a comprehend roll and see if you know what type of a nest this is? Uh, comprehend. All right. Uh, I will have to push that. <laughs> All right. Two, uh, three successes on the push. Cool. Check a nightmare box whenever you push. Oh, yeah. And you got some successes, so that's good. If you got any banes on that push, you're taking conditions, remember? Yep. And, um, so, so, so you... Three successes. All right. I will do what this is then. Um, you kind of like examine it. You like smell a feather or like lick a stick or something. You're like, this is a goofus bird nest. Hmm. Um, and you go on to describe. I just like this art, so I want to show it to everybody. But you go <laughs> on to describe this uh, beast Um so that uh, everyone can get thoroughly terrified by by what kind of a nest they're in. There you go. 
Ah. And so, Russ, you know, you kind of just tell some people some facts, and you know that the goofus bird is uh, does not care for what you think. It likes to fly upside down and backwards, and uh, there's no explanation for why it does that, but okay, it does. Um, All right. And you know that they're, um, you know, they can be hostile. They can be kind of unfriendly. You've heard Fair. stories about goofus birds just pecking someone's face off, and <laughs> um, yeah. But you've I never will, seen one yourself. You didn't know yeah. they were real. I will uh, share this information, and then uh, I I want to kind of poke my head up. Uh, kind of climb up the side of the nest and see what I can see outside of the nest. Okay. So you're up peeking out, looking down, and you see down, but there's no ground. It's almost like you're looking into a deep, dark hole or a dark well or something. So you can see the tree that you're on, or you're in the nest, you're looking mm -hmm. over, you can see the tree trunk, it goes down into blackness. Um, and there's no other trees around you. I will let them know. I think we might be in here until we can figure out why we're here. Uh, a bird, a goofus bird, flies in. Uh, being the lead dreamer, Rust, uh, it has got its eyes set on you. And it swoops in and it starts just batting you with its wings and its claws and its talons. And I think you can either fight back with the force, move to get away, or try to try to manipulate it or something. Calm it down like Crocodile Dundee or something and <laughs> whisper to the goofus bird or whatever you want to do, man. You could jump at it. You could jump. <laughs> and I don't know. Whatever you want. Uh, you're on mute. Well, I will try to roll... Uh kind of out of the way and, and towards my friends and, and <laughs> little help here. Little yeah, help. Let's, let's see a move roll. Uh, one success. All right. All right. You do it. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to do right now? Little I help. think. So that uh, you know how when you have a, a dream where you're falling and you hit the ground and you wake up all of a sudden I think we all jump, so I am going to jump over the side. All right, you stand up there and you're you're thinking about it. Who else is? What do you got? Is that crazy? What's everyone else doing? Oh my gosh! I'm be like, oh my god, who's the goofus bird in this situation right now? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna grab the wing of the goofus bird with my bare hands and just try to rip it off of Rust. Okay. Um, do a force for me. A force roll. John, John will pass this, maybe, because he's huge. Yeah. Two. Two successes. Right. You take it, you whip it off, you throw it, and you throw it down uh, off the nest, like down into the abyss, into the darkness, and it, it disappears. And you kind of see it like uh, you know, disintegrate or like, you know, uh, fade away or whatever. You, you think, oh, maybe Henry's right. I don't know. Like, maybe we should all jump. I sounds good to me. I will leave yeah. away I up mean, on yeah. the edge. <laughs> I guess worst case scenario, we stay here and get eaten by birds. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, Henry, go ahead. We'll we'll follow you, buddy. Good luck. All right, it's just like in high school. You grab your nose and dive on in. <laughs> poof. You do it and you fall and poof, you disappear into the, the darkness. And everyone else doing the same thing? Oh, yeah. Right behind. Right. Yeah, I guess so. Boom. Boom. And then the goon is like the last one. Ah, of course, my luck. You know, and, and jump and poof. And uh, they, everybody wakes up. However, and you wake up and you're in the barn and you're like, that was a crazy nightmare. However, uh, Rust, who is the lead nightmare there, you have this, this strange 
strange feeling just coursing throughout you that you have developed this like some sort of new supernatural superpower and and in your as you were falling uh you had like a vision of yourself like right before you woke up using this new power that you think that you could use at some point um but could probably only use one time and if you want to and if in the real world you could uh you could use this nightmare talent which if we were playing more campaigns you'd write on your sheet that you have the nightmare talent fl uh, backwards flyer and with a six you can with a successful move roll one time you can fly for five minutes uh but it you would be upside down and backward um but this would just be some sort of like crazy nightmarish burst of energy that in a time of need you could use that and uh, there's all kinds of fun, nightmarish talents that translate into the real world that you can acquire from these uh, trippy nightmares that are that we're having. But uh, you Very know, cool. you, nice. you 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 wake up and you're you're feeling good. You got to bounce in your step, Frank, because you know that you have this like superpower you could you could potentially use in a time of need. Um, everybody is like, you know, you would clear your conditions and stuff. And I think everyone probably walks back to camp. Heroes with a big ass snallygaster uh, in a in a parachute. The AI is like maybe carrying from the it's back because she's strong. Chicken. Before we walk into camp, I'm going to unbutton my shirt again. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and everyone knows what a badass and and what yeah. must have happened. Something weird must have happened with your chest hairs. Um, Absolutely out in the wilderness but you've explored some new areas you've got a little bit of food probably not much to 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 last that long for the big group so i assume sure. you're going to share and you probably brought these new this family over that maybe some more mouths to feed so you know your quest for food is not over in this game also you will oftentimes um we don't we don't really like we like to kind of really track the food right like if you kill a squirrel you put it on your sheet and if you have the snallygaster meat, you're welcome to eat it for a day. But if you're not gonna smoke it or keep it somewhere cold or preserve it somehow, some preparation, you're, yeah. yeah, you're back to just looking for more food again in a couple of days. And um, right. but but you you've you've found that there's other people here. There was a building. There's another group that you didn't know about. Um, you've seen yeah. a couple more fearsome critters. It's just a lot out there that you're you're wondering about. Man. There's a raccoon god. <laughs> exactly in some temple that you could stumble across so everyone's got a lot to talk about in there you know you make it back the next you know it takes a whole day so you make it back in the evening um and probably have some more critters to to tell stories about and uh and and that's that's i think where we'll leave it but I, i'm proud of you, you guys for killing a killing a snallygaster tonight snallygaster. oh yeah that, that was all uh, that was all john's idea that trap but just like worked yeah. amazing it and did you, work well. And, you know, the bait wasn't too bad either. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. That was that was super fun. I, I love how, like, I love the exploration and, and the weirdness and just everything. Uh, of course, I know it's I, – I love you. Like I said in our, in our interview that we did uh, the other night, that uh, I love Year Zero Engine games, and I, I love when people kind of put their own spin on it. I love that, uh, you know, you kind of have that, you know, almost like two realms you've got the you got you got the the wilderness aspect and then you got that nightmare aspect that kind of feeds in and and i, I really enjoy that that was that was a lot of fun um so uh, uh yeah you said that this uh, this is going to a kickstarter on uh, october 20th october 20th please please consider supporting it i would uh i would much appreciate it and um this is our first uh role-playing game at geektopia games where we want to make lots more and uh, so, so help support us, please. Uh, and in uh, in the interview, you said that the the pledge levels are, are fairly, uh, you know, cut and dry. There, there's not a whole lot of uh, you basically are just looking to to make this a, a physical game, and and then also some dice and and uh, uh, and just yeah. kind of get it in people's hands. Yeah, no, so short or um, simple, like not a million choices. Like you, you can get just the PDF and we're going to make it mm -hmm. uh, really attractive pricing to just kind of get the word out about this game and, you know, help us, uh, you know, 
keep making games. And then the soft cover uh, will be an option. It comes with the PDF. And then the third option is if you want that hard cover and it comes with the PDF. So we'll have an add on for dice, which if you want to go ahead and, and support us a little bit extra, much appreciated. The dice is a great way to do that. Um, and also we, if you're a 3d printer like me and you have a love for, uh, printing and, and painting minis and things, we have some digital, uh, add-ons as well that are just totally optional. You saw we played tonight and it works perfect just like this, but, um, if you want some minis and things like that, we have extra add-ons, but they're all optional and October 20th, it'll be ready to, to click back this project and, um, much appreciated if, if any support you can give. Awesome. And I'm going to remind folks that uh, is the, the link to the Kickstarter is is in the description of this video. Uh, you can go and uh, hit that follow button. You'll get notified as soon as it goes live or you'll see it after the fact. Uh, I also put the link to the quick start that, that uh, Matt and the team at Geektopia, Geektopia Games uh, posted that's available right now. So if you'd like to download it and just kind of take a look at it and, and uh, try it out for yourself, you're more than welcome to. It uh, doesn't have all the full rules and everything, but it has a lot of uh, stuff to kind of get you started and give you a good, good, you know, feel of, of what's to come with the, with the full game. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Chibi Peach asks, creature cards so you can see them? Is that uh, something that uh, you've considered, uh, Matt? It's a good idea. I mean, we have the cards from the board game, and I, I've been using them to, like, draw a random critter sometimes. Um the uh, like a, like an art card you mean to hold up that could be very yeah. cool i we actually i mean it just since you mentioned it we actually a design choice that i made was their two page spreads of the the fearsome critters so if you're the gm in person and you have that book you can just hold that book up and there's no spoiler text or anything on that page um it's just a the big page of the critter and and i think that's as a gm i like i kind of like that where instead of holding a paper up to block part of it or something you can just Hold that that thing up, so it's kind of like an art card for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that. Plus, it's a little bit bigger presence, so you know, it kind of makes a bigger yeah. impact as well. Very cool. All right, well, if folks want to know more about Geektopia Games and you, Matt, what uh, where should they go online? Where where do you want to send send folks? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, GeektopiaGames.com is the place to go and see all about Fearsome Wilderness, the board game, the RPG, our other game uh, made by John Lash, who's a, a member of Geektopia Games. It's called Cage Match. So those are our three games, and we want to make more. Um, I wanted to shout out to um, uh, the other members. So there's Ian Baskey, and I wrote this game, but there's Derry Morgan, Chuck Smeltzer, and John Lash at Geektopia Games. Uh, Willis Harover did all the artwork, the black and white artwork for the archetypes and the, some of the maps. And uh, Bud Wheeler does those um, those uh, those black and white kind of mixed media critters and things like that. And uh, a guy, Cyber Nose Feratu, does our color, um, some of the color artwork that's in there, like AI. And so I always like to recognize the artist. Um, but yeah, if you want some more information, please... Uh, go to Geektopia Games, and then uh, just a plug for myself, I'm Dystopia Matt on Instagram, and I'm always posting pictures of things that I paint and play, and uh, and those are the ways to stay connected with us. And and please, the Creepy Well is our Facebook group, so if you join the Creepy Well, the more the merrier. We want people in the Creepy Well talking about creepy, fearsome wilderness stuff, so um, that's that's our community right there is, uh, is on the Facebook called the creepy well yeah it's a, it's a great group to be honest with you yeah. i joined it uh, quite a while ago and it's it's a lot of fun uh some great uh, great community there uh before we leave uh, josh if you wanted to plug uh, everything you've got going on what uh, where, where do you would you like to send folks uh well uh keep coming back to vcg because you're gonna find me here and uh at my youtube channel halloweenville excellent mr ben higgins higgins 802 on twitch yeah, uh, uh, if you want to watch some digital gaming uh, in the mornings, uh, it's Higgins802 on twitch.tv, or you can find me here Monday nights as well. I'm part of the Victory Condition Gaming Chaotic Goodcast. And the one and only Austin... Austin, yeah, we, got, well, what... we, we gotta give we gotta get we gotta get you like your own like brand and like show i, I know like, right we need, we need an austin show i think that's basically <laughs> what, what what we've uh, we've determined here at this point i know i know i i feel like i need a like a legitimate answer to this question every time uh <laughs> but here's gonna be my answer is uh what josh said um come back here 
uh, support VCG. I'll be here playing games, uh, hopefully. Um, spend time with your kids. Spend time with your parents. Spend time with your friends because uh, life is short and you never know. That's right. Time, I have say it time and time again, time is our greatest asset. We never know when it runs out and we can never get it back. So use it wisely and use it to make connections with those people around you. And if you have to kill a Snellygaster, do it. That's right. Don't be afraid to unbutton your shirt and just get that chest hair out there. No, to right. Lure right. it. Lure it. So... All right, folks. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you, especially to Chibi Peach for the super chat. Yeah. Appreciate that. That was a great suggestion. Much, much appreciated. It was amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you that if you'd like to uh, know more, go check out the Kickstarter. If you enjoyed the session, hit that like button down below. Share it with uh, some folks uh, if if they, you think that they might be interested. And uh, we're excited to see. Uh, this is hit Kickstarter and, and get funded and, and get to everyone's hands so that you can play it and maybe uh, lure some sal snally gasters with your group as well. So, all right, this has been Victory Condition Gaming because winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you would be so kind, make sure you hit that like, comment, and subscribe, all the YouTube jazz that we're supposed to do here. Uh, it really is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to support us more, uh, you can uh, check us out on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com backslash victory condition gaming. have all sorts of Patreon perks, and it definitely helps support our show.